What's going on, everybody? I'm going to make some live calls today for a little bit. I got some time. Not the deal desk. I'll be calling my leads. All right. <clears throat> Let me pull up my CRM here and see who I'm going to call. I'm gonna pull up call tools. I'm going to pull up prop stream because that's what I use for comps. Just in case you missed it, I've been getting a lot of questions about how to run comps on LAN. A lot of people overcomplicate the process. I simplify the process. I show you exactly what I do. So um, check out my YouTube channel. You can go to the ritoolbox.com. There's a link to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. Um, and there's a video on there on how to run comps on LAN. I'll be doing another video on how to run comps in general because... It's really not that complicated. I know I've been doing it for a while, but you're able to know what your max offer is in less than seven minutes. And in the beginning, if you're new, if you're starting out and you don't feel comfortable making offers over the phone, that's okay. I always tell people, get all the initial information, okay? Get all the initial information you need. Uh, bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, condition, why they wanna sell, when they wanna sell. And then you simply tell the seller, hey, is it okay if I give you a call back in five to 10 minutes? That way, when you call them back, in between that time when you call them back and you get off the phone, you run comps. You take your time run comps, okay? And you're going to do that until you transition and get a lot more comfortable, okay? But once you get comfortable, you're going to be able to make offers while you're on the phone. That's the key, okay? So let me, um, let me go ahead and call some leads here. I'm going to pull up some of our PPC leads from all over the place and see what we get. And I'm going to be using call tools. Let me scoot this over here a second and see what happens. Um, all right. So a lot of these, let me see some that I've been contact. I'll, I'll hit the discovery list first because these haven't been, some of these discoveries ha haven't been hit. So let me just copy and paste this number. These are from all over the place. We're hitting the PPC list and let's see what we get. I'll turn up the the audio. Let me turn up all the way. I think you're able to hear that. I don't know how to say this guy's name. I'll do my best though. If they pick up the phone, if not, we're gonna move on to the next one. Belly, Belisario. Mr. Belisario. Hi, this is Dominic. Please leave. Or Dominic. Let's call Dominic back one more time, see if he picks up the phone. If not, we're moving on to Mr. Owens, easier name. And then um, when it gets to running comps, I don't mind showing you because these aren't other people's leads. These are these are me. So I'll show you. I'll be more happy to show you what, what's going on on the other side of the screen. Hello? Yes, who's calling? Hey, Dominic, my name's Steven. I think you spoke with my, my partner a while back in regards to your property on uh, Ocean Boulevard. Were you still looking to sell? I was never looking to sell my property. But if you want to give me a million dollars for it, I'll sell it. Oh, you were not... What if... So I gave you a million dollars, you would sell it? Yeah, I'll give it to you. For a million dollars as is, I'd sell it to you. All right, where do I send it over to? What's that? Where, where'd I send the million dollars over to? Where'd I wire it to? You ain't wiring it to me. You send me a cashier's check. I'm just messing with you. Hey, um, I, you spoke to my assistant um, last week, and I guess they gathered a lot of information. And um, but it seems I, like I, I'm not interested in selling. Otherwise, I wouldn't have said give me a million dollars. Okay. You, people call me driving me insane. Oh, I bet. And yeah. and, and everyone wants to buy it on cheap. And then flip it. I'm not interested. So just remove the number. I'm just an annoyance. Goodbye. Oh, no problem. Yikes. Mr. Dominic's not a very happy person. He lives right next to a church, too. There's a church right across the street. And he does not want to sell his property. Now, you know what's interesting is the cold caller, um, or it looks like he put a lot of information. I mean, he gathered tons of information. As soon as possible, interest in the cash offer. Listen, let me show you something here real quick without showing you the address. Actually, I, I can't show you this without showing People that say that they're interested in selling their property um, only if the price is right are people that I would continue the conversation with. But, 
But this guy just wants a cash offer. Now, he wants a million dollars. Obviously, he's not realistic. And typically, I would tell people, hey, it seems like you're not really interested in selling. I'll just take you off the list. I was just messing with this guy. Um, I'm going to put him as not interested, okay, because we contacted him. He's not interested. Uh, initial no interest. Let's move on to the next one. We, we oops, I think I'm freaking... Um, I got to take the settings off this phone because it keeps going on sleep mode. All right. So Mr. Dominic is not very uh, happy about selling his property. He gets tons of calls, blah, blah, blah. That's okay. Let's move on to the next one. So we got Mr. Owens. Um, I spoke with Mr. Owens. He said that the property is being rented for several years now, and they're paying him on time for $1,800 monthly. He said if the price is right, we can keep his tenants. Hello? Mr. Owens. Yes. Good morning. My name is Steven. I think you spoke with my partner a while back. I believe last week in regards to your property Hello. on Cyprus. Were you still looking to sell? Uh, yes. Did I catch you at a good time? No, I'm okay. Okay, great. So uh, the reason I want to call you back is give you an offer. Um, and my process is really simple just to break it down. I just want to ask you a few more questions other than what I see in the notes. And that way I can go and evaluate the area right here over the computer, see what I can offer you. It takes about seven minutes. Is that okay? Okay. All right. Perfect. And before I get started, I like to let everybody know up front, um, you know, we are a real estate investment company, so we don't buy every property we look at, but we do have a team of agents just in case we may not be a good fit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Always set expectations up front. Okay, great. So I'm looking here in the notes, um, and it seems like the property is in good condition. It's rented. The roof is one year old. Um, the plumbing electric is good. Can you tell me a little bit more specifically about the interior condition of the house? The what condition? The the interior. Oh, uh we completely gutted that unit. It was in a really rough state. We completely gutted it and came back with everything in it was new and everything in it is in excellent shape. It's upscale. It yeah. doesn't need anything. It needs some carpet now, but uh, it's got three bedrooms, so it needs three bedrooms of carpet. Other than that, it doesn't need anything. You said you gutted it and you redid everything? Yes. Oh, so the property is fully renovated. Yeah. Absolutely, I did most, a lot of it myself. Wow, okay, so what's got you interested in selling? It seems like a great property. Well, I'm far away, and I never bought it to rent it. You know, I, uh, I bought two of them and, um, and renovated both of them, sold one of them for $402,000, and they're identical. And, and then the market crashed, so I got stuck with a second one until I rented it. In the same area, you sold for for four hundred. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was same area. Gotcha. It's different, but same size. It, it, these are called king units. They got all yeah, sizes, yeah. but the king is in the center, and it's it's bigger than any of any of them in that in the village. And I had two of them, and then the other one sold for four hundred two. Why is this tree blurred out? I never understood why Google did that. Gotcha. Okay. So the property is fully renovated and, um, you know, like I let everybody know up front, we are a real estate investment company. So if we're not a good fit, you know, obviously we have a team of agents. I don't want to waste your time. Um, but if it's fully renovated, what kind of price range more or less were you looking to sell for? Well, I've got 325 in it and I would take that or, or close. 325, you said? Right. Gotcha. Okay, and if you got that, if you got an offer that made sense to you, what kind of time frame were you looking to sell about? Like a week, a month, a couple months? Uh, this is a retail hours, guy. No, so there's really no, I don't have any time restraints. It's under a 14 month lease, um, so I'm mm -hmm. going to sell it. And the people that are in there have been there for years. It's an older couple. They take pristine care of it. Yeah. If it needs something, I fix it. And, I'm um, running the comps right so now on it. I mean, it, it, can you hear me okay? Roof, you said a, a year um, of roof, no, the air conditioning is a year He wants old. too much, and just like every even, seller we speak with, right? Air, but it, if he wants too much, can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm on speakerphone. And Hello? I catch about most of it. 
Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. So, um, three three twenty five more or less is a retail price. Have you ever considered listing the property on the open market? Is that something you ever might be open to? <laughs> this um, old time he wasn't muted. Well, yeah. I can, can you hear me now? Me. Hello? Hello? No, he's muted. He wants too much, just like um, every other seller is what I was saying. Right now, I'm um, not selling it to someone, but... If, he actually you know, wants a buffer market value. Buy it cheap and make a big he profit. He wants 325 The ARV is like 256 Gotcha. Because, uh, you know, as, as far as a cash offer, I wouldn't want to waste your time. We wouldn't be anywhere near that. But I think you're asking a, a great price range on the open market. And I was going to ask you if listing something you're ever open to, I can have one of our agents give you a call and go over some options. And, um, you know, if you like what you're great, if not, no big deal. But at least you know what your options are when you're ready to sell. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, already, I already have a real estate agent, so I, oh, okay. I would not want to waste their time or my time. Perfect. Okay. Well, no problem. I will, uh, you know, keep our number. If anything ever changes, feel free to give us a call back. Sure enough. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Um, bye. Um, so check out these comps. He's asking what? 325? Look at this. Uh, this is like an, a condo. Um, I mean, there's not, I mean, check out these photos. Just like, this is in decent shape. Well, this is the lobby. I don't know why they put pictures. Of. So these are condos. I mean, I, I would say this is updated for the, this condo. I mean, look at that. And this sold for how much? This sold for uh, $290. So he wants $325. And, uh, you know, I don't want to waste my time or his time. Anybody, anytime somebody wants full market value right off the bat, I, l I actually talk bad about the cash offer. And I talk good about... Uh, the retail because I actually give ARV comps typically he says he has a realtor whatever so don't ever try to uh, you know make a deal out of somebody that's not even a, a qualified lead you gotta you gotta make sure <laughs> this whole time I, I've been muting the mic and I guess since it's connected to call tools I have to mute call tools he was hearing everything I was saying but uh, if, if Dominic was on was on the line that the previous hour we spoke with it'd be a different story Okay, so um, this guy wants too much. I'm going to click contacted. He is interested, but he wants above 20%. Something that I do, and I'll be more than happy to show you this, is uh, check this out. So if somebody is, um, you know, if they want too much, what I do is I have this closed loss. My phone's like kind of like sideways because it's on a tripod, so just bear with me. But I put once over 20%. And he actually is once full, he's a full retail lead. Okay. Now, why do I have this on here once over 20%? Because in 30, 60, 90 days, when we want to follow up, start a drip campaign, we have a lead manager follow up with our leads, we can categorize which ones we want to call first. So, for example, if we wanted to follow up with all the discoveries or all the people that wanted over, you know, um, they wanted full retail. We can categorize what's more of a low hanging fruit. If it's the people that want over 20% or is it people that no longer want to sell? Okay, this is really important for KPIs and all that stuff. You have to be able to identify, um, you know, what kind of, what kind of sellers you want to call back. Um, let me see here. So let's, let's call another one. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in. I think I saw a bubble for a question. I'll, I'll get to those in a second. But anyways, I put once over 20%. He still doesn't want to sell. He's, he's just, um, he doesn't want to list it. He just wants too much. Um, as hot as the market is, I, you know, I always pitch the listing, but if someone wants an unrealistic price, I don't try to make false, like I don't want to make false hope basically. I've had people, Let's say the ARV is 300,000, they want 400,000. They're probably not gonna get that. So I'm not gonna say, that's a great price range on the open market. Is listing something ever might be open to because when I transfer that lead to the agent, the agent's gonna be like, you're crazy, man. There's nothing selling for this much, right? So, um, you know, you, you wanna be kind to people and say, I think, you know, you're, you're asking a little bit high. What is this? I think you're asking a little bit high of a price. Um, so listing probably wouldn't even be a good option. Wouldn't you agree? 
I would tell them there's nothing sold in this area uh, more than three hundred thousand. Let's call some different leads because I see a lot of these are apartments, uh, condos. There's nothing wrong with that. Actually, condos, apartments are actually a lot easier to um, comp. But let me let me let me find some other properties here. Lots. Let me find some single family houses. I believe the the law for the eviction ends in two days, if I'm not mistaken. So if you are paying attention to that, you might want to start pulling lists for um, you know distressed landlords. <clears throat> just saying. So let me actually go to discoveries. Oh, we have one new one touch here. I guess it just came in. Let me see. Mm, call status, new in touch. So my call status, here, hold on a second. Let me see if I can pull this up. New in touch. This is in Washington. So I'm going to go ahead and call this lead. Actually, you know what? In Washington, it's, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. I don't want to call somebody in Washington too early, but it should be okay. So let me go ahead and call this lead and see what happens. Mr. Newman. I usually call people no, um, no later than nine. I don't like calling earlier than that because you got to be careful with that stuff. There's some laws and stuff. Yeah. What the heck's going on here? Hold on a second. Mr. Newman, you know, it's funny. So our cool cars are trained to get a call back time. And Sorry, um, the person you were trying to reach has a voicemail box. Even though there's the best call back time, we still call earlier than that. Because the worst thing that can happen is, hey, man, I told you call me this time. No problem. I just want to check in and see. I'll call you at that time. But once an acquisitions agent calls that lead, they can then claim the lead. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, the rules are whatever acquisitions agent speaks with that lead first are the ones that can claim the lead. That's what we want. We want to create healthy competition within the office, okay? So we call this one. Let me call him back one more time. There's actually two phone numbers. So I'm going to call twice on each phone number. This lead is actually in Washington. I love Washington. This is a little bit of a newer market that I uh, entered the past few months, but the, the deal size is ridiculous here. So let me call him back. Oh, this is out in the... Yeah. Hello? Uh, this is Mark's son. If you're looking for Mark Newton. Yes, yes. Is he available? Sadly, he is not. He is actually on a trip at this point in time. Okay. And who's this? I'm sorry. Uh, this is David, his son. Oh, okay. And when's a better time to check back in? Ah, uh, he's supposed to be back home by tomorrow morning. Okay, so I'll try again tomorrow morning then. Yes. And um, if, if you would like, I can give you his main phone, but uh, he is currently on a fishing boat at this time. So he is, does not have a phone at this mm. point. Okay, yeah, I don't want to disturb him when he's fishing. I got his other phone number here, so I'll, I'll call uh, him. Uh, can you ring up that phone number? What was that? Can you ring off the phone number, like the 360 or something? Yep, yep, that, that's his phone number. That's the call. All right, perfect. Thank you. Yep, yep, you're welcome. Have a great day. I had to pause it because I had to repeat the phone number. Whether you heard it or not, it doesn't matter. He's on a fishing boat. Um, so I'm going to put this here in the notes. Now, every time, every time we, um, we speak with the lead. Okay, let me see if I could angle this properly so this comment section here anytime we speak with the lead right we want to make sure we put that in here right so it's kind of hard to type with on a i think that he said that was his son that, that answered the phone on a fishing boat said to call back tomorrow morning my spelling no my spelling's horrible with one with one hand it's a little bit difficult um anyways i put that on here 
And the reason I don't put this in the notes, right? Because let me see if I could put this. So these are the notes. Okay, these are the notes. These are the notes from the cold caller. All right, you see how detailed the notes are? This is how notes should look when it comes to a cold caller. And I'm putting this in here without showing the address. Um, I'm not going to show those callback numbers again. But anyways, instead of putting stuff here in the notes, what we do is we put it here. Um, when it Because this is timestamp. So if I hover over this, it shows July 28, 11.59 a.m. Okay, we need our acquisition team is trained to put uh, updates in here because if you put it in the notes, it's not going to be time stamped. Any basic information should be in the notes. Okay, but anything um, that requires like updates, callbacks has to be here so we can keep track of this stuff. Okay, so yeah, so let me uh, put this back. Okay, here, let me take some questions. Where do you get your cold callers from? If you go to the RAToolbox.com, it has a link to where I get my cold callers from. I can proudly say that I have not used, right? Um, and I've used a few cold call companies. The cold call company that I'm using, um, like it's just, they are, it's not cheap, but they go through a very in-depth training and then they get handed off to us. So by the time they get to us, they're killers, okay? Now, I've recently partnered up with that company. Something we're going to be launching this week, we're in the works of, is, and I don't know if you guys ever come across this, but let me just say this real quick, um, is virtual acquisitions agents, handpicked by me and trained by me. That is going to, that's that's going to, I've never heard of a service that has really good virtual acquisitions agents because it's easy to find someone on Upwork and you know you got to train them you got to manage them but what if i do that for you there's a lot of cold call services out there but i've never seen an acquisition service out there you know what i'm saying so if i can provide that service think of how drastic and how much of an impact that's going to be so stay tuned on that we're fi we're finalizing the kinks on that but i'm very very excited about that cuz i don't see anybody doing that stuff you know what i'm saying so i'm going to i'm going to be one of the first people to do that I'm sure there's gonna be other people, but um, you know, if they're interviewed, handpicked by me, trained by me, you're gonna get quality. And on top of that, on top of that, if they don't perform to your expectations within 14 days, you'll get them uh, replaced for free. Okay, just saying. That's how confident we are in the product. So just stay tuned for that. But anyways, if you want cold callers, the same company that I use, it's called Vosity. Go to the reitoolbox.com, okay, and set up a call. Obviously, it's not for everybody. It, it, it's got to fit in your budget. You know, it there's so many plans. Some people just want a VA for them and then they manage it. Some people like me, I want VAs um, hired and managed, right? Cold calling is, uh, well, building a cold call team in itself is difficult, but managing them is another story. We use hub staff. We want to listen to calls. We want to look over KPIs. We want to make sure they're sharp. You know what I'm saying? We want to make sure they're sharp because it is an investment. So just go to the reitoolbox.com, okay? And then stay tuned for virtual acquisitions. I'm really excited about that because, I, you know, if you guys can hire a virtual acquisitions agent, it's going to be almost like having me working uh, in your company. All right. All right. Anyways, this guy's on a fishing boat, so we don't want to disturb him on the fishing boat because then he might not sell us our house. But we're going to put interested, contacted. I'm going to I'm not going to set a task for this because my acquisitions agents already set a task. Um, so I'm going to let them follow up with them. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. Let me hit the discovery list a little bit more. I got a little bit of time. OK, what is it? 12, 12 5, something like that. So let me hit the discovery. Um, and I'll show you when I'm running comps, I'll show you, okay, because these aren't other people's leads. So you're, you're going to be able to see how I run comps. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy and paste this address to prop stream. I never run comps before I call. If you know me, I, you know, I don't do that because if, if I'm starting to run comps and, um, before I call and they don't pick up the phone, I've just wasted time. So I don't ever run comps, uh, you know, when, before I dial. But I do dial, I do start running comps while it's ringing, okay? So let me copy and paste this number. 
We have another lead in Washington. I'm using call tools. Okay, somebody asked me about a power. I use call tools, so let me X this out. If you have questions, go ahead and put them in the bubble. Let me turn this up and see if this guy picks up the phone. I'll show you what the property looks like too. Can't really see it. Hello, Ken. Hey, Ken, good morning. My name is Steven. I, I think you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to a property you might be looking to sell on Sydney Avenue. Were you still looking to sell? Uh, yeah, I'm going to put it on the market in a couple months, so i got to do a little repairs. On, I've been a renter in there a while, but yeah, so it's okay. in the process of selling it, yeah. Perfect. I actually want to call you and give you an offer on the house. Did I catch it at a good time? Uh, yeah, I got a few minutes. Okay, perfect. So um, I'm not sure if my assistant told you this because you spoke with him, I believe, yesterday. But um, we are a real estate investment company, so we don't buy every property we look at. But we do have a team of agents just in case we're not a good fit. But I'd like to let you know that up front because a lot of investors, I'm sure, call you and waste your time. You know? So um, let me take a look here. And before I get started, um, let me see, see if I could pull this up here. It takes about seven minutes. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, I'm right in the middle of some electrical work, so yeah, I guess that's okay. Okay, perfect. So I'm looking here in the notes. I see here, um, the roof is about 15 years old. It has tenants month to month. Contract expires August. Um, it's in good condition. Can you tell me a little bit more specifically about, uh, the interior condition? Well, I haven't seen it for a couple, two or three years, but I agree. So... A few years ago, probably five years ago, maybe six years ago, I remodeled the whole thing. And so mm. I basically got it. I got it the house house down to the studs and I rewired it. I'm an electrician, so I rewired it, had it infected. Mm. Uh, we, we, we plumbed it. Uh, so new insulation. I put so all I new see windows it's asking price 300000 And um, yeah, so the condition of the kitchen was done no. um, so, um, at that time. It's like right at an were, ARV. Uh, so I, let me just, let me just get it. IKEA cabinets. His phone's so crazy right now. Cabinets, let me um, let me see what I can come up with. I'm running the comps. Yeah, Check us out. The, the, the tile was done. I think the tile needs to be replaced. These the are kitchen the comps. Area. But other okay. than that, so let me get yeah. an idea of where he's at. Like I can say it's, there's no, you know, there's nothing old in that house. All the new, all new doors and and the finishings inside. I mean, nothing. You know, it wasn't real fancy, but yeah, they are uh, doors that are. So now I want to do a takeaway sure, and ask him, man, it sounds like a great property. Wait, look at this. Seems like a great property. What's got you interested in selling it? Uh, I'm just I, I'm just actually building a duplex at this point. I want to get the money out of it so I don't have a big outlay right now or so. Mm. Too big of an investment on the, on that portion mm. of it. So that, that's what's driving that portion of it. I just want to get yeah. the cash out of it right now. I got, I owe, you know, I owe 75 on it. That would have facilitated me buying that. So this house is remodeled. Well, you know, I think that's so actually much, a great price on the open market. He's not motivated. Anyway, he's serious. Sure I'm using the cash for other... Let me turn this down. Sorry. Hurts my ears a little bit. Um, Yeah, hold on a second. Let me, let me work. Yeah, so says here let me see if i can pull this up so i mean it's in, it's in good shape last time you spoke with my assistant you were looking to get about three hundred thousand. that well the realtor told me i could get 325 possibly she, she 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 gave me some comps in the area yeah so i'm guess after i'm gonna put you know five i'm probably gonna I'm gonna not put a new roof, not an investment lead already has an agent so probably and follow up check, he's actually asking a, a, a good price i think you'll get what he wants in. You know, do any kind of remodeling that needed to be I done. I want to see if he's gotten commitment with his agent where, first. Oh, so that might you know, be a close that's the range he told me. So um, that's what I guess without you know real estate fees and mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm looking for. Without yeah. real estate fees, you said? No, I said if I sold it, I'd have to pay the real estate at oh, three twenty five. Yeah. So so if he looked at it for three twenty five, I got all the fees that come out. So yeah, that's why I'm thinking. If I'm just getting, I I had the renter in there. He was going to try to get a VA loan. For some reason, he had a little bit of. I know that's credit. not my speakers. Said, no. This guy's doing electric work, <laughs> which is so unfortunate was... for him. But so that's what he was going to pay me was three hundred. So. Wow. Okay. And is this is this an agent that you know personally that you've already committed to? I have not committed to her. No. I have okay. Worked with Remax. Yeah. She is with Remax, and uh, she helped me through the 
the process with the other. I did a short plot over there, and she so she was going to list some houses I built. But now I've decided to build a duplex. So I'm going to talk bad about the agent without talking bad. I'm going to give high comps, and he hasn't committed to the agent. Gotcha. And, I, you know, I'm not sure who the other agent is. Since we are a real estate investment company, sometimes, um, you know, whenever we list a property, like if you're asking 300000 or a little bit above, obviously cash offer is not going to make sense. But what we like to do is we like to tell our clients, hey, that's okay because if you were to list a property with us, we also have buyers that are cash investors. Now, if your house is in good shape, which it sounds like it is, sometimes these cash buyers are able to pay a little bit higher uh, just to stay in their sweet spot. And that, you know, that's cash, uh, no closing yeah. costs and all that stuff. I, I, I'm surprised she said you can get 325 because I see one here on uh, 2397 South Flower Avenue, which is not too far from yours. This one sold for 340000 And, um, you know, it's in decent shape. So I, I actually think you, you're, you're asking actually a great price. Um, now, I know you're, you're thinking about listing the property in a couple months, but if you're open to it, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but if you're open to it, I can have one of our agents give you a call, go over some options as to what it looks like with us to get at, you know, closer to that price range. And if you like what you're great, if not, no big deal, but at least you know what your options are when you're ready to sell. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we could, we could definitely pursue that, sir. Okay. Perfect. Well, I will put that here in the notes. I'll, I'll let, I'll let you go because I know you're uh, with us. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. I think I just stole a listing. <laughs> I was getting a call. I, I, I may have froze because I was getting a call. I always get the, I don't, how do I, um, I think I put do not disturb. Hold on, I'll put this on do not disturb. So you see what I did there. I, I think I might upload this clip to YouTube because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm looking to list with an age and I, you know, just because they say that doesn't mean that you can't capitalize on it. Remember, if people want, full retail, or if somebody wants uh, a discount, top dollar, quick sell, you can capitalize on all these leads. So what you want to do, this is, uh, let me just repeat this real quick. So he's asking around 300000 If his house is renovated, I'm looking at the comps here. The highest selling one is three, oh, actually it's 387 Well, Wow, okay, well, that's even better. So check this out. So he wants 300000 Look, Look at all this. 342, 325, 260, 295, 387. He can definitely get more than, you know, in my opinion, 325, all that stuff. But the thing is, you notice what he said is I plan on listing with my agent. That's okay. This is when you want to talk bad about the agent without actually talking bad. Hey, um, I'm not sure who the other agent is, but have you already made a commitment to that agent? No. And th listen, I'm going to repeat this one more time because this is a mental note for all you people out there that have agents or maybe you are watching this and you're a real estate agent. You don't know how to capitalize on this lead or you're kind of scared to step over the line. Check this out. This is exactly what you want to say. Hey, that's great. Um, now, if you're open to it, I can have one of our agents give you a call. Go over some options as to what it looks like listing with us. And if you like what you hear, great. If not, no big deal. At least you know what your options are when you're ready. So how's that sound? You know what I mean? What's he going to say? No, I don't want to hear options. He's trying to get as much money out of it as possible. So when it comes to that, you have to pitch that in a way where it's not too, um, how to, like, it's not like too salesy. You know what I mean? You don't want to be a pressure salesman. You don't want to like force somebody to make a commitment when they're uncomfortable. What you have to do is you have to agree with them, offer it as an option. What is going on here? I'm getting blown up. Anyways, so I'm going to put here, he's open to listing. He's actually asking a, a reasonable price. He's not crazy, okay? So he's open to listing. So what I'm going to do here is, let me see, uh, full retail lead, listing lead. Now, what we do with these listing leads, let me see if I can show you this. We have a button called listing leads. I suggest if you have Podio, you have this on here because uh, what we do is anytime we have a listing lead, we push this button and that gets automatically pushed to our agents. Okay? So anytime we get a listing lead every day, that list gets scraped 
picked out, it gets sent to the agents that we're working with, and then it's up to them to follow up with those leads. We get updates, it's a whole process, but that's typically how it works, okay? So this is actually a great lead. The guy's, uh, he's actually asking a decent price. In Washington, we've actually been locking up properties pretty high and selling them really high too, because the market's crazy over there too. All right, so let me make a few more calls and see what we got. Uh, this is another one, Washington. It's like when, when you catch people at a bad time, don't try to continue the conversation. Even though this guy was working, I still continue because I let him know it takes about seven minutes. If somebody's busy and they say it takes about seven minutes, that's okay. Uh, let's, let's do some questions. Do you text blast as well? Very rarely. Um, I mean, right now our, our primary way of marketing is cold con. That's really it. It's no secret. That That's it. Now, if we're doing SMS... Uh, we do drip some of the SMS in there as well. We use batch leads for that, which you guys can get. Um, you can get 500 free text messages for one dollar. Not free. It's it's a dollar. 500 messages for one dollar. Go to the ritoolbox.com and try them out. Um, all right. So let's see. Response couldn't be shared. Try again. Would you sell your CRM? Never really thought about that. I don't know. There's a lot that goes into a CRM. It's it's not as easy as um you know giving it out. There's a lot of like, you know, especially when it comes to Podio. It, it's a process just transferring it over. Have I thought about selling it? I I don't know. I mean, that's never really come across my mind. I might if there's enough people want it. I might think about it. Um, dang it. Hold on. These questions. Let me see if I could pull this up. Um. How many callers do you have dialing per day? Right now we have three cold callers. Well, one's on leave because they uh, have a baby, but we have three to four cold callers, okay? So uh, yeah, we have four cold callers. What website do you use to find VAs? So there's a few you can use, let me show you. There's upwork.com, uh, onlinejobs.ph. So let me flip the camera. So um, this is one, okay? So this is Upwork. You know, you can find talent. You can actually put here uh, cold caller, okay? Let's press enter. And you see this, right? These are all cold callers. The thing is, if it's with the United States, obviously it's gonna be a little bit more pricey than it's overseas, right? Um, now, depending what your budget is, what your company structured like, you can actually go to hourly rate. You can go to ten dollars and below, and you will get some people that are actually in the United States. Okay, like this guy. I mean, seven dollars, um, ten dollars, nine dollars, seven fifty. Another website is. Let me go to online jobs. Dang, it's so hard to type with one hand. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Onlinejobs.ph. Okay. This is another website you can use. Um, these are all workers in the Philippines. You can put in here. You can either, um, well, you can search for resumes. I'm sure if you're on this website, you're not looking for a job, but resume. So you could put in here a cold caller. And a VA can do anything. Okay. And then it, this comes up. It comes like a profile. You can click on them. Tells you their experience. Um, I mean, it says a long paragraph. And then, um, if you go to the ritoolbox.com, it takes you to this. You click on the best virtual assistance, and it takes you to this. This is the company that I use. And I've tried a lot of cold call companies. I've yet to find somebody better than this. These cold callers are trained. Uh, they have a lot of different plans and everything. Schedule free consultation call. Just fill out this information. Um, if you use the link, you get 250 off. Okay. Now, for those of you that are just joining, earlier I kind of discussed somebody had a question about um, VAs. And I want to say that we're actually working on acquisitions VAs. Because a lot of people provide cold caller VAs, but nobody provides acquisitions VAs, like good ones. I'm not talking about 
you know, a day of training, you throw them on some YouTube videos, that's it. Like these are sharp, okay? I handpick them, I train them, I deliver them, okay? So um, I'll be making an announcement for that hopefully this week, F figuring out a few more things. Anyways, um, got some more questions. So that's what, where we find the VAs, okay? I use Vosity is what it's called. If you have questions, feel free to drop them in. I'm not going to – I'm going to see if – um. How much time I got here? I got a little bit more. Let me see. Um, yeah. All right, cool. Let's make a few more calls. If you have any more questions, type them in. Uh, let's see. When first starting out, what was your weekly goal sending offers? Every single person I spoke with, I tried to send an offer on. Or that was the goal. I mean, if I got somebody on the phone and they really weren't looking to sell, I don't want to waste my time with those people. But every person that I spoke with got an offer. Every single person. So let's call this other one in um, Tacoma. But yeah, you got to make offers on everybody. And starting out, um, you know, I didn't have a, you know, a good budget. I just drove for dollars. But I, I made – I hand wrote letters – I did a lot of stuff, okay? Can you put this on one on YouTube, please? Yes, you know what? Let me um let me go to YouTube real quick. I should be a lot more active on YouTube. I actually just uploaded a video on how to run comps on land recently. Let me go to my YouTube channel. Um I think I need two more subscribers to reach a thousand. Uh, and I'm not even that loud about it. All I really do on YouTube is deal desk. Uh, and on clubhouse and stuff, but go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go to the ritoolbox.com and subscribe. I need two more to hit a thousand. Okay. So, anyways, let's call this person. Let's do another. Let's do a few more live calls. Keep the questions coming in, and I will answer them. Okay. I'll probably be here for fifteen more minutes, if anything. Right. Okay? I know some people are watching this are on lunch or something. Um, but let's call this lead. This is in Tacoma. Right now, I'm hitting the discovery list, people that haven't picked up. Let me close all these tabs. So the VAs, guys, VAs is a big demand in this industry. The problem with VAs is finding good VAs because there's a lot of people that offer VAs. Some are good, some are bad. But like, you know, like sometimes they have the process where it kind of hurts acquisitions. That's the thing for me. So I previously tried a company. And they had a process where their cold callers ask specific questions, but at the same time, they ask questions that I feel would actually hurt the lead once it got to acquisitions. Okay. Um, they're a great company. It's just, you know, I, I like to do things a little bit different. So anyways, let's call this lead. I'll put on a uh, speaker. Let me turn it up. Hopefully I have a good phone so it's not too staticky. Getting hungry. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Let's call one more time. I always, I always usually call twice because if somebody gets one phone call, they may not think it's an important call. I call again. They'll be like, "Who is this person?" Okay, so I'll call one more time. If not, we'll move on to the next one. <clears throat> Looks like they're not going to pick up. Let's do some Q&A. We're getting a lot of questions. Um, if you are typing the questions in the chat, it's going to get lost quick. So please type it in there. Um, all right. So how do you make sure agents you send to do showings doesn't go behind your back? So that's a great question. And it really comes down to paperwork. We have them sign a uh, you know, non-disclosure and a non-compete. Um, just have them sign the proper paperwork. And we've never had an agent go behind our back um, because I don't think they'd be willing to put their license on the line, the reputation on the line. And on top of that, we have them when we onboard them, not that they work for us, they work with us, but there's still rules that need to go by if they're going to appointments. I mean, these are these are leads. If you're sending agents on appointments, these are leads that you pay for, right? So you don't want them going behind your back. So this is where you got to vet them properly, make sure that they're vetted properly. 
and um and make them make sure that you have them sign a non a non compete non disclosure and also you have to send them a contract of the breakdowns and what their expectations are okay so that's how we avoid that issue um how do you make offers if you're cold calling all day more than half the time no one answers or not interested so here's the thing with that um when you're making offers all day uh well, when you're cold calling all day when you're cold calling all day cold calling sucks nobody likes cold calling this is why we hire vas to do it and it makes sense right because the, the you know you're paying them well but anyways uh when you're cold calling I'm not sure if you have a power dialer or not, but you need to have a power dialer because if you're calling one by one, it's going to take a long time. You know, it's going to take a very, very, very long time. Okay. So an example that I always like to show, let me see if I could pull this up. If you pull 2000 leads, let's say you go on prop stream list, whatever you pull 2000 leads. If you're using a good skip trace service like Batch Leads, you get between five to ten phone numbers. So, um, two thousand times ten is twenty thousand. Do you really want to call one by one twenty thousand phone numbers? No. You need to have a power dialer that has the capability of dialing at least ten numbers at once. Which I don't recommend that to you. You know, to turn it up that high, I recommend at least a triple line dialer. But um. You'll be able to go the, through the leads a lot faster. Yes, you're going to get wrong numbers, people that say F you, you're a scam, but you will get people that are interested, okay? Um, you need to make an offer on anybody. Now, something that you need to be very careful of is people that want just, they just want to know what your offer is. Do not waste your time with people that just want to know what your offer is because it's the biggest time waster because those kind of people, if you go through the whole script, by the end of the conversation, they'll be just like, oh, thanks for that offer. I'll, I'll think about it. Th thanks for that. I'll just, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll, let me get back to you. You don't want to talk to those people, man. You don't want to talk to those people. People that say, I'm interested in selling for the right price, talk to them because we don't know what the right, the right price is. So something that's extremely important, whether it's you calling and or your team calling, you need to train yourself and or your team to only focus on people that want to sell. It's going to save a lot of headache, okay? All right, next question. Um, let's see. If you have a good deal, but it's owner occupied and you have to wait for them to move out, would you wait to market it or walk buyers through while they're living there? I would walk buyers through when they're living there. Um, I never want to wait until they move out. This is why we have an inspection and closing date. Um, you can, whether it's 10 occupied or owner occupied, you should, once you get a contract, start marketing it. And then what you want to do is set up a showing. Now, the thing with showings, properties that are 10 occupied or owner occupied, the thing about that, sellers hate when you set up multiple showings throughout the week. Hey, we have a partner on Monday. Uh, we have one on Wednesday, on Thursday, Friday. If I were you, what will decrease the stress level of sellers is you want to set up showings with buyers on dedicated days. I would say no more than twice. So let's say... Uh, you want to set up a showing on Monday and Wednesday between two and four. You want to cram as many buyers as possible within a two hour time frame. That way, sellers will respect the fact that it's only two times in a week. And it should be no more than that. If you have to show buyers more than one week, it's probably not the sexiest deal. But try to make sure you set up a two hour time frame to show the property. And I always let sellers know, hey, um, we want to take a look at the property, but the good thing is we're never just going to show up. We'll always let you know a day or two in advance, and we'll set up a day and time that works best for us and your schedule. Does that sound fair, Mr. Seller or Mrs. Seller? Yeah. You just want to respect somebody. You know, it's just courtesy, okay? Um, when are you doing a comps part two? I'll do it. Uh, what's today? Wednesday? I'll do it this week. Maybe today. I'll make an announcement. I did a comps on um, on uh, land because a lot of people wanted that. But I'll do a part two because there are some new features in PropStream that a lot of people don't know about. And they're not using right. So I guess that's the biggest demand right now. So I'll get right to that, okay? Um, sorry, just join. Where do you get your VAs? So I get my VAs from a company called Vosity. Go to the reitoolbox.com. Let me show you 
Uh, let me show this one more time because I know some people are just tuning in. No problem. So when you go to the ritoolbox.com, it'll take you to this. By the way, guys, I need two more subscribers to hit a thousand. Let me see where I'm at. I need two more subscribers. Go to the ritoolbox.com. Click on that. Let's use subscriber number thousand. I got something special for you. Okay. All right. So click on the best virtual assistants. And then it takes you to this website. If you use them, they take $250 off depending what you're looking to use. But set up a free consultation call. This is the company that I use. They're called Vosity. And I'm partnering up with them soon on um, – what the heck? Uh-oh. What did I do here? I'm partnering up, up on them soon on, on um, virtual acquisitions agents, okay? I'm the type of guy that I like to uh, show – and then tell, I don't like to tell and show, you know, because I, I, I want to have everything perfect before I blast it out there. But I'm letting you guys know on your since you're on, on my live, okay? So, yeah, Vosity. Click the link in my bio and it'll take you right to it. Where can I find a very good acquisitions VAs? And what's the question you like to ask when prospecting to not hurt your acquisition process? So, to this day... I have yet to find a company that offers virtual acquisitions agents. Can you guys drop in the comments? Do you feel, I mean, I know everybody needs cold callers, right? Like that's, that's, you know, general, but drop in the comments. Do you feel that virtual acquisitions agents would be beneficial towards your business? I just want to know the feedback from the people. Okay. Cause in my opinion, I, I, I mean, it just depends where you're at, whether you're new or advanced. I think, I think it'd be important. Okay. So I'd like to know from the public, do you feel like virtual acquisitions agents would be beneficial or do you like them have them in-house? It just really depends on what your business structure like too. Some people like having it all virtual or some people like having an office. No matter which one you do, I think you know you could use it for both. That's just me. Yeah, yes, definitely, yes, thousand percent. Save money and still do deals, yes. Okay, good. Well, I, I guess, you know, I guess that's really good then because, um, you know, I don't know any services out there that offers virtual acquisitions because that is a tedious training process. Like if, if you hired a virtual acquisitions agent, you have to train them and manage them. What if you hired them? You don't have to train them. You don't have to manage them. They're trained by me, handpicked by me and managed by uh, you know our company. You know, so that is something that I feel is going to really change a lot of businesses. So, um, you know, I'm right now, I'm in a partnership with somebody with Vosity on doing that. So stay tuned for that. And I'll, bl I'll blast it out. Once it's done, I'll blast it out. But I don't want to push, push it to the world unless it's perfected, okay? All right. So, um, and what, to the second part of your question, what's the question you like to ask when prospecting? So whenever you have cold callers, here's the thing about cold callers. I don't want cold callers. By the way, thanks for subscribing. Um, subscriber number 1000 will get a special gift from me. Okay, so if you subscribe right now, you let me know who it is. And obviously, I'm going to confirm who it is. I got a special gift for you, okay? I'm not going to say what it is because then everybody's going to uh, slam my DMs. Um, so to answer your question, when you have cold callers that are prospecting, I don't want cold callers over qualifying leads. Basically, what that means is I don't want them talking. I, I mean, they could ask price like, hey, what's your asking price? But you don't want them negotiating. You should leave negotiations up to your VAs. I'm, I'm sorry, up to your, uh, well, maybe acquisitions VAs, not yet. You need to leave negotiating up to your acquisitions team. Acquisitions are the ones that negotiate, build rapport, make offers. Cold callers, in my opinion, should not be doing that. Because if they do do that, by the time it gets handed off to acquisitions, you've broken rapport, right? And now they got to pick up where they left off. So for me, I like to keep it simple. I'm a very simple person. Who subscribed? Who subscribed? Let me see who subscribed. Hold on, hold on. I got I got a time out here. Uh, let me check notifications. Subbed. Deloya. Who subbed? Let me let me check real quick. I think I might start doing this um, at maybe every hundred subscriber, a thousand. I don't know. 
So let me check real quick who subscribed because uh, make sure you, you DM me. Well, I'll DM you and I'll give you a special gift. Sorry. All right. So Paul, oh no, Chuck, Paul. Is Paul on the call? I don't know if you're on here, Paul. I think you're the one that just subscribed. So shoot me a DM, okay? I got a gift for you. I'll, I'll start doing more giveaways. Don't worry, okay? I'll start doing more giveaways. And these are good giveaways. This isn't, hey, free, uh, uh, I don't know. It's just something real general. Free, you know, objection sheet or I don't know. Objection sheets are actually good. But some people give garbage giveaways. Like if you give, if I give a $100 giveaway, that's great. But I'd rather give something away that'll make you a thousand dollars. That's just me. I don't have a problem giving money, but it's like if I give somebody money, it doesn't really do much uh, because they can make a lot more with real stuff. Okay, so where was I? I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Paul, yes, you're right here. Shoot me a DM, okay? Because it shows it shows on my notifications on YouTube that I did get a lot of new subscribers. Thank you guys, but. Uh, it shows that Paul was the, uh, he pulled the trigger the fastest, but I'll be doing more giveaways. So stay tuned. Don't worry. Don't get discouraged. I'll be doing giveaways. I, 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 last giveaway I did was, uh, the big giveaway was a prop stream free for a year. How would that be? If you have prop stream, if you already have prop stream, I'll cover it for a year. If you don't have prop stream, I'll give it to you for a year. I think I'm gonna bring that back actually. Cause that, it, that right there is that, that that's, that's a real giveaway. Okay, that's a real giveaway. Um, all right, so acquisitions VAs. What I was talking about, sorry, I keep getting distracted here off topic, but you don't want cold callers to overqualify a lead because that's going to hurt the acquisitions team. And I've been doing this for a while, I've been on both sides. That's just my experience. Okay. All right, cool. So let's let's go some more questions. Uh, damn, a lot of questions. Keep them coming. When I run out of questions, I'll probably get off. What's your first dispo method? Once we get under contract, we send it to the title company, and then we start marketing the deal. Typically, we call our VIP buyers first because they have enough of a good relationship with us to buy it sight unseen or if they have photos or the setup is showing, but we want VIP buyers first. These are people we've already done business with, okay? So um, that's what I usually do. And selling the deal is the easiest part, you know what I'm saying? Right now is crazy. Um, how do you find people to do walkthroughs with your buyers when you're out of state? Great question. So if you're out of state, and I do this in my backyard and in the states that I'm not in. Um, so <clears throat> I usually use real estate agents, okay? I use real estate agents uh, to, you know, to go on appointments. But when we have showings, we don't just want the buyer to go to the property and the seller to be there because we don't know what may happen, you know? That does, it's not uncommon for a buyer to try to go around the back. Even though you can get into legal, you know, war with that, you need to make sure that, um, that, dang it, sorry, you need to make sure that somebody's babysitting the buyer and the seller. And typically those are real estate agents. So this is why pitching on real estate agents is really important. Uh, and what I do to find agents, by the way, it's a very simple method, nothing crazy. I go to a local Facebook group. So for example, if I want to be in the Atlanta market, which I am, but when I enter the Atlanta market and I need boots on the ground, I'll go to Atlanta Facebook group, like an investor group, and I'll type in, hey, um, my name is Steven. I'm looking for an investor-friendly agent to partner up with on our wholesale deals. That's it. It'll get spam with comments. You message them individually. Hey, thanks for your interest. What's your best contact number? And this is what it sounds like. I don't think I've ever explain this on IG live, but whatever, if you're here, you're getting some good stuff. So this is how you pitch a real estate agent. Okay. When you pitch a real estate agent, you can say, Hey, thanks for your interest in, um, you know, my post. This is what I'm looking to do. I am a wholesaler in this market and I'm looking for an agent to partner up with. What does that look like? Well, it looks something like this. Uh, Bob, we come across a lot of leads that want full market value and they're not a good fit for us. 
But what we're willing to do is give you all those as retail leads. By the way, Bob, we pre-qualify these. So don't think you're going to just get garbage. People that want you know a million dollars and the house worth 300000 we're going to send to you. We want to send you quality listing leads. On top of that, Bob, sometimes we may get people that don't want to sign over the phone. And I don't care how good of a closer somebody might be. You're not going to get every single deal over the phone. It just does, you know, it's never a hundred out of hundred. Okay. So Bob, um, for those kinds of, uh, people, we want to set up appointments. So we'll send you an appointment to that property. You'll, you know, walk the property, build rapport, negotiate it. Once you lock it up and we close on it, we'll give you 10% of the assignment fee. But wait, Bob, there's more. Sometimes some people may not be tech savvy. They may be a little bit elderly. They may not know how to use a computer, may not even have internet. Uh, for those people, we'll set up an appointment, okay, and we'll give you 3% or a flat fee, whatever works best for you guys, um, and we'll give you a, a 3% minimum just to get a signed contract. But wait, Bob, there's more. We'll give you between seventy-five hundred dollars to take photos of the property when they're available. But wait, Bob, there's more. <laughs> Whenever we have to show uh, properties to buyers, we'll give you 100 bucks. Does this sound like something you're interested in, Bob? You think Bob's going to say no? Why would he say no? Why would Bob say no to money? If agents say no to money, there's a problem with them because they work straight commission. You know what? As a matter of fact, I have a recording on my computer of um, I call I, uh, I call, call two agents on pitching. You guys want to hear it real quick? Let me see if I can pull it up. Let me know if you want to hear it first because I'm answering questions here. Uh, let me know if you want to hear these calls I recorded. Of me pitching agents, you can hear exactly what it sounds like. If not, we'll keep the questions going. But uh, let me know if you want to hear this recording. I'm drinking water everywhere today, man. <clears throat> yes, yes. I need more yeses. I need more yeses. I got two yeses, which is great, but it only shows me two people want to hear the recordings. Okay. See, she's the only one that said please. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let me pull it up. Whatever. Let me uh how to pitch an agent. Let me turn it up all the way. All right. Let me see if I can um let me pull it up. Sharita. <laughs> so this lady's this lady's name is Sh uh Sharita. Very interesting name. I like it. It rhymes with margarita. So check us out. Let's see if we could play this. Hold on a second. Sharita Margarita. How to pitch an agent. Okay. Hi, Sharita. Hi. How are you? Hey, this, good. This is Steven. Did, did I catch it a good time? Yeah, yeah. I'm good now. Sorry. I had family over and it was loud. And I just didn't know. No problem. Home no yeah. problem. So um, my partner and I, Victor, we're actually investors out of Los Angeles. Uh, I okay. actually live in Tampa. And uh, what I did was I'm looking for an investor-friendly agent in the Kansas City area. And then Sharon said that pay attention, that you would be a good fit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So anytime we're looking to enter a new market, there's a few things we like to bring as far as value to the table. So let me just give you a quick breakdown as to how we can work with agents. So um, as investors, obviously, you know, we come across a lot of sellers that just want full market value or above full market value. Um, right. So typically what we do is we don't just want to throw those leads away. We want to capitalize on it. So what we do is we send um, one of our agent partners all those yeah. retail listings, and that way uh, we want to make sure that they're committed to at least listing it or at least open to hearing you out. Once they okay. give us the green light for that, we send that to you, um, and then you and I can come up with a commission uh, referral split that makes sense. Um, oh, yeah. On top of that, Sometimes we get homeowners. Notice that all the value I'm dropping they first. Require face to face. Face to face is always a lot more powerful. They require an appointment. So what we do yeah. is we set up a, what's called an investment agent appointment with the seller, and then right. you'll go out there. You'll bring the contract. You'll negotiate. Uh, you know, once you lock it up and once it's closed, we'll give you ten percent of the assignment fee, and then. Okay. On top of that, sometimes we have sellers that, you know, they just may might be a little bit more elderly. They may not have computer, internet, or maybe not be as tech savvy. So for mm -hmm. those kind of uh, sellers, we'll send an agent out there with a the contract. There's no negotiating. They've already agreed to the price and terms. You just simply go over the agreement, and then you get 3%. 
And then okay. also, uh, sometimes if Dropping you more know, value to we photos or we need to show our buyers the property if the agent is available in the area to take photos or kind of just make sure that the, the buyers, you know, it's basically babysitting the buyers, make sure they don't talk to the sellers behind the back or anything oh, yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. that unfortunately, mm-hmm. that happens. But we pay between 50 to to $100 per appointment for those. So, again, uh, you know, all the retail listings will be sent over your way. Uh, any mm-hmm. investment appointments, you get 10%. Investment deal ready, you get 3%. And on top of that, photos and showings between 50 to Watch the hook. Listen to the hook. Does that sound like something you might be uh, interested in? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yep, it's right up my alley. Uh- Bam! You know what, guys? I am going to save this video because, um, I, I, you know, a lot of people, I think, could benefit from it. I'm going to save this IG Live, and I'm going to put on my YouTube channel so you can replay pause fast forward whatever you want to do um i'm gonna go eat some lunch all right i'm gonna save this video i'm gonna put it on um my youtube channel i'll upload it so don't worry about you guys asking to save it it's not gonna be saved on my ig but it'll be saved on my um my youtube okay uh so i actually answered this question right there i'll do another i'll do another qa or Q and A, all right. So, but yeah, hopefully that helps. Uh, go have a great day, guys. Go to the reitoolbox.com. It has a list of all the resources I use in my business. Also, uh, DM me what kind of videos or comment on my YouTube. What kind of videos do you want to see? All right. I like giving people what they want. Okay. You, you know, even though I create my own content, I want to give people stuff that you can actually implement. All right. So other than watching Netflix, watch Steven's YouTube channel on making, you know, it's going to fill your, your pocket up more. All right. So anyways, I'll save this live. I'll upload it to the YouTube channel. Hope you guys have a great day. Go crush it, guys. Take care.